Thanks for joining us, Kia. Um, we're gonna start off with Alex Simon from the next. Sorry. <laughs> Hi, Kia. I have a Mercury question for you, but I do know that Team Canada starts tomorrow down in Puerto Rico. And for especially for you and for Bridget and Natalie who are playing in the W, you know, you guys are playing at the highest level of competition. I'm sure that feels ready. But how much are you keeping up with what Team Canada is doing both at their training camp in Tampa and now as they kind of head down to Puerto Rico? Yeah, uh, most of it's been through Zoom and, um, you know, WhatsApp group chats that we keep up with um, players and coaches and, and what's going on down there. Obviously, it's tough to um, not be there, but we understand right now, like you said, this is the best league in the world. So we're continuing to get better every single day, um, even though we're not actually physically there. So it'll be great for them to get going, be able to watch some games, hopefully on the, the streaming apps that they are played on and then get some good games under their belts. I know the girls are working their butts off right now. And for us in Canada, we, because of quarantine rules and health and safety protocols, they've got to be on the road for about three months straight before the Olympics, before we actually get to Tokyo. And so um, I feel for them, but they're, they're going to do a great job uh, in Puerto Rico. And then for you guys at Mercury, when you face a team like Dallas twice in a row like this, but especially when they are kind of as deep and as versatile as they are, you know, they can kind of throw 10, 11 different bodies at you and they seem to kind of be willing to ride whoever's playing well that night. What kind of a challenge does it present when a team kind of can attack you with that many different options and really focus in, you know, outside of Arike, especially on anybody can kind of pick up the slack for them. Yeah, I mean, they're a difficult team to play against because like you said, they are deep and um, they've got a lot of talent. They're, they're pretty young. So sometimes you can try to capitalize on some of those mistakes that young basketball players just make simply because we're young, we all made them. Um, and so I think with this team, obviously it's, you do focus on what they did to obviously take you out of that game, last game that we played and, and what they did well to win. But we're more focused on what we have to do and how we execute our scout and our, our execution on the offensive and defensive end. Um, simply because we kind of play the game in the same sense of, yeah, we got to defend them, but they have to find a way to stop us too. And so just keeping that mental, uh, sorry, that mindset moving forward into a game like this and coming out and trying to finish off this series with a win. Next up is Cody Cunningham with suns.com followed by Jeff Metcalf. Hey Kia. Um, I know you were at the suns game last night. Uh, just how electric was that crowd and how exciting is, you know, Phoenix basketball as a whole right now with, you know, the Merck season on its way and with the Suns in the playoffs. Yeah, I mean, that's really exciting. Um, obviously, I'm a Raptors person, but um, now that I'm here, a little bit of a Suns person as well. And so um, it's great, obviously, for the game of basketball, but it's great, especially for um, Phoenix itself to be able to have really good basketball on a consistent basis. And so um, I know that this crowd was absolutely electric. It was very loud in here. There was people everywhere. It was exciting. Um, you know, it's a little weird being in a situation where there's like a lot of people around since uh, um, the pandemic had happened and you're not really used to it anymore, but it was rocking in here. And I know that there's a lot of love for basketball here in Phoenix. And I think we see that on the men's side and the women's side. And as you know, the Suns continue to make a run, I think it'll be really fun. And then whenever their season is done, it's like all those fans come over to us. <laughs> Next up is Jack, sorry, Jeff Metcalf with the Arizona Republic. And that will be our final question tonight. You mentioned, um, you know, trying to um, figure out what they were doing against you. And then, you know, obviously um, the shooting, especially from three point, wasn't what you guys wanted it to be. So what, what, what was kind of the mix of that? Like, how much was it just we were having an off night versus, you know, what they were doing to you defensively? Well, honestly, I think we missed a lot of wide open shots. So I'm not sure it was a big kind of, you know, taking contested threes, we had a ton of open threes. And to be honest, if, you know, me as a shooter, personally, I shot out of the seven that I shot, probably five of them, I shot as perfect as possible. But once the ball leaves your hand, it's a 50-50 shot of whether it's going in or not. So it might have hit a bad roll or whatnot, but they felt good. So I think for us, um, a lot of it was being able to get the ball into BG and allow her to do her thing, whether it was that attack in the basket and get those one-on-one -on -one shots, or it was her finding us on the outside. And I think that was something that we used really well because they tried to send traps. And when we got those open shots, we just didn't knock them in. So a lot of it, I think, was more of an off night. Um, it's just stepping into it again, making sure they feel good and hoping that that 50-50 ball drops on the other side this time. Yeah, 
you know, when you, when you look back on it, it does kind of feel that way. Like in, in the moment, you, there was a little, like when you guys came on in the third quarter, it's like, okay, this is going to carry through toward the end of the game. But, you know, at that point, it was kind of a toss up and you didn't know, you know, how it was going to go down. But anyway, what, when you look at um, Dallas too, I wanted to get a little more into them because you saw what they did in those two games against Seattle before they played you guys. And you can see now this is going to be a dangerous team all the way around. I mean, this is not a surprise when they beat anybody, I don't think. Yeah, no, I think this is a team that's continuing to grow, obviously, with, um, you know, Sabali and Alicia Gray coming back. It's hard to kind of get your timing back right away. So the more that they play together, the more timing that they get together, I think that's going to um, help and boast well for them. Obviously, they have some really dynamic scorers and Enrique and Marina Mabry as well, who's been, who's been great this season for them. Um, so there's a lot that they have that they can use to um, be great on both the offensive end and the defensive end. I think if you can play Seattle, a team that's really good, um, as well as they did in all three of their games, you know, taking them to overtime and playing long-winded games with them, um, they'll have a chance at, you know, anybody. And I think that's why uh, whenever you step onto this floor and in the WNBA every single night is a battle because it's the best in the world and every team can give you a good shot. All right, that will conclude our availability. Availability, thanks for the time, Kia. All right.